he was one of the most versatile players in NBA history. In his prime, he was an elite two-way player who made highlight plays on both ends of the floor with his incredible athleticism and natural instinct. He was listed at just 6'7", but for the better part of a decade would find himself near the top of the league's rebound and block leaderboards. He had one of the most unorthodox shots you'd ever see, but it went in, and that's all that matters. But he was at his best in transition or making a backdoor cut for a huge alley-oop. And even when he would put the ball on the floor, he had a solid post game and an automatic floater, as long as he shot it with his right hand. He was one third of the Phoenix Suns 7 seconds or less trio of the mid 2000s and would transition to a great role player for the Dallas Mavericks, where he would help them to an improbable championship in 2011. But Sean Marion never gets talked about as much as he should, as in his prime, he would often find himself in the top 25 of nearly every major statistical category, while finding himself high up in voting for Defensive Player of the Year and MVP. However, his game was extremely different and wasn't nearly as pretty as the other great small forwards of his era, and along with being well-mannered and soft-spoken, he never brought attention to himself. He let his game do the talking, and it did a lot of that during his 16-year career. But now that his game is done talking, he deserves to have his game talked about. So that's what we're going to do on today's episode featuring the Matrix, Sean Marion. Let's jog your memory. Sean Marion would attend Clarksville High School in Tennessee, and would say he dunked for the first time as a high school freshman on his AAU team. At Clarksville, Marion would be a teammate of future NBA player Trenton Hassel. Marion would say that he grew consistently and was usually one of the taller players on his team, but once he hit 6'7", his growth stopped. He would be first team All-State as a senior, averaging over 26 points and 13 rebounds per game. Marion would spend two-thirds of his college career playing at Vincennes Junior College in Indiana due to his SAT scores being too low. At Vincennes, he was initially the team's point guard, but the coaches decided to move him off the ball so he could score more. Marion was dominant at the JUCO level, averaging at least 23 and 12 on at least 56% shooting in both his freshman and sophomore seasons, including averaging 23.5 points and 13.1 rebounds, while being named the 1998 NJCAA Male Student Athlete of the Year as a sophomore. Marion would transfer to UNLV for his junior season, where he would immediately become the team's star player. In his lone season with UNLV, he would lead the team in scoring, rebounding, steals, and blocks, while shooting nearly 53% from the field and nearly 30% from three. Unfortunately, the Rebels were a far cry from the powerhouse they were in the early 90s, as they would finish the year with just a 16-13 and record and would miss the tournament. However, their 9-5 and record in conference play was tops in the conference. He would also record a career-high 21 rebounds on February 22nd versus TCU. And for his first and only season with the Rebels, Marion would average about 18.5 points, 9.5 rebounds, 2 blocks, and 2.5 and steals per game, while being named first team all-conference. Initially, Marion had planned to stay for his senior year, but after learning how highly regarded of a prospect he was, and reportedly outplaying a lot of high-ranked prospects in workouts leading up to the draft, he chose to declare for the 99 NBA draft and was selected 9th overall by Phoenix. Marion was already joining a good Phoenix Suns team coming off a playoff appearance and led by point guard Jason Kidd and other good players like Tom Gugliotta and Cliff Robinson. Then the team would make the biggest acquisition of the offseason about a month later when they acquired Penny Hardaway from the Orlando Magic, which led to the formation of the backcourt 2000 duo with Kidd. And they had also signed Rodney Rogers a couple days earlier, who would go on to win 6th man of the year in Marion's rookie season. So, the Suns looked like one of the top teams in the league going into the 2000 season, as Marion was already being recognized by some as the steal of the draft. But like so many great teams on paper, injuries ruined what could have been an all-time Suns team. Hardaway struggled with plantar fasciitis and would miss 22 games, while Kidd would miss 15 games due to a broken ankle suffered in March as the duo would only take the court together in 45 regular season games. Gugliotta would deal with a life-threatening situation from taking a sleeping aid in December, but then his season would end in March, after a serious knee injury occurred during practice. Marion would also miss 31 games this year due to a knee injury suffered in December that would keep him out of action until February. But with all the Suns injuries, he would get to be a starter in 38 games, and would be one of six players on the team to average double figures and records seven double-doubles on the season. Even with the injuries, the Suns finished the year at 53-29 and and would play the defending champion Spurs in the first round. Kidd was still out with his knee injury and wouldn't return until Game 4, 
but the Spurs were also without Tim Duncan, who had injured his meniscus late in the season. So the Suns, led by Hardaway, were able to defeat the Spurs in four games, as Marion's best performance would come in Game 3, when he scored 16 points and grabbed 14 rebounds in a Suns win. Round 2 brought the Lakers, who were too much for Phoenix and would win the series in five games. Although Marion remained a starter, he would struggle in this series, and would only manage 7 points on 2 of 11 shooting in the series deciding Game 5. But Marion's season was still a success, and his averages of about 10 points, 6.5 rebounds, half a steal, and a block per game saw him voted second team All-Rookie. There was optimism going into the 2001 season, but injuries would again decimate the Suns, and it would be made clear that guys like Hardaway, who only managed 4 games this year, and Gugliotta, who would play in just 57 games, were both never going to be the players they once were. But this left opportunity for Marion, as there was now nothing stopping him from taking the next step in his career. And he would do exactly that, as he would up his averages across the board while leading the team in scoring, rebounding, and blocks, along with being second in steals, as his versatility was on full display. Marion would even find himself in the league's top 10 for both rebounds and steals. Marion would play in 79 games and put up double figures in 69 of those games, while recording a double-double in 47 of them. The Suns would have a similar season from the year before, as they would finish 51-31, and 31, and would play the Sacramento Kings in the first round. But after a Game 1 win, the Suns would drop 3 straight to lose the series. Marion had an incredible Game 1, as he would put up 21-10 and 10 with 3 blocks on over 56% shooting, but would never crack 15 points or 34% shooting for the rest of the series. And it didn't help that Kidd shot a combined 22 for 69 across the four games. But Marion's improved sophomore season, which had seen him voted to the rookie sophomore game, ended with him averaging about 17.5 points, 10.5 rebounds, 1.5 steals, and 1.5 blocks per game. Shortly after the season ended, the Suns made a blockbuster deal, which also showed that they had faith in Marion, when they traded Kidd to New Jersey for a package headlined by Stefan Marbury. And while Marbury was a good player, he was no Jason Kidd. Marbury and Marion would form a healthy duo this year, as Marion again upped his scoring and would shoot a career-high 39.3% from three, and would record 43 double-doubles on the year. Hardaway returned to play in 80 games this year, and Gugliotta would manage 44. But the Suns were not the team they once were. They would make a change on February 20th, when they sent Rodney Rogers and Tony Delk to the Celtics, for a package headlined by rookie shooting guard Joe Johnson. At the time of the trade, the Suns were sitting at 25 and 28, but would go just 11 and 18 the rest of the way, finishing at 36 and 46, and missing the playoffs. Even though this season didn't go as hoped, it appeared the Suns were building a young core that could have the potential to be something special. But for his third season, Marion finished with averages of about 19 points, 10 rebounds, 2 steals, and a block per game. For the second time in four years, the Suns would hit a home run with the ninth overall pick as they picked up high school phenom and future rookie of the year, Amare Stoudemire, in the 2002 draft. And now, along with Marbury, Marion, and Johnson, they had four great players who were 25 or younger. Johnson would come off the bench a lot this year, so he wouldn't get a chance to really show what he had. But Marion would be second on the team in scoring behind Marbury, with his first season of putting up over 20 points per game. And Stoudemire would have a great rookie season as well, to finish third on the team in scoring. Marion would be the team's Swiss Army knife, as on top of being the second leading scorer, he was tops in rebounds, steals, and blocks, and would finish 8th in the league in rebounds and tied for 2nd in steals. Another change in Marion's game would be his 3-point volume, as after attempting 226 threes in his first 3 seasons, he would shoot a career-high 364 this year, to lead the team in attempts as well as percentage, as he made them at a 38.7% clip. Marion would record 38 double-doubles and drop at least 30 points in 9 games this year, which would earn him his first career All-Star selection, where he would score 8 points and have 3 steals. But his performance would be overshadowed by Michael Jordan hitting an impossible fadeaway over Marion to send the game to overtime. The Suns hovered around 500 for the season, but would finish 44-38 which would get them the 8th seed and a matchup with San Antonio and MVP Tim Duncan in Round 1. The Suns would shock the Spurs in Game 1 when Marbury hit a running 3 at the buzzer to give the Suns the win. They would then drop the next 2 games before evening the series in Game 4. But the Spurs would win Games 5 and 6 in what would be a closer series than expected, as 3 games were decided by 2 points or less. 
Marion would record three double-doubles in the series and average nearly two blocks and two steals per game. But he and Marbury struggled to find their shot, as they both shot below 38% from the field. But for the regular season, Marion would average about 21 points, 9.5 rebounds, a career-high 2.3 steals, and a block per game. Johnson was finally a starter for the 4 season, and Stoudemire was quickly establishing himself as a top big man in the league. And along with Marbury and Marion, the Suns had four starters averaging over 16 a game, but no one else cracking 9 points. And the lack of depth showed, as the Suns were sitting at 12-23 and 23 on January 5th where they would then pull off another big trade that sent a package headline by Marbury to the Knicks for a package headline by big man Antonio McDice, who had been dealing with serious knee injuries for the past couple of seasons. Additionally, after just 21 games this year, Suns coach Frank Johnson was replaced with assistant Mike D'Antoni. Marion would have another great year, as he would be a top 15 rebounder in the league, and again be tied for second in steals. However, he would shoot the lowest field goal percentage of his career at just 44%, but would record 35 double-doubles this year, as well as be one of two players, along with MVP Kevin Garnett, to rank in the top 30 in points, rebounds, steals, blocks, and minutes. But the Suns would finish just 29-53 and 53 and miss the playoffs. And for the regular season, Marion would average about 19 points, 9.5 rebounds, a career-high 2.7 assists, two steals, and one and a half blocks per game. Marion would also suit up for the 04 US national team over the summer, who took home bronze at the Athens Summer Olympics, where he would average about 10 points, six rebounds, and a steal per game. The Suns would change their trajectory for years to come in the offseason. McDice had left, but they more than made up for it when they signed free agent point guard Steve Nash to a six-year, $63 million contract that the Dallas Mavericks weren't willing to match. Even with the addition of Nash, no one expected the Suns to improve as much as they did. Mike D'Antoni implemented his 7 seconds or less offense, with Steve Nash being the perfect point guard for this playstyle. And having the uber-athletic forward combo of Marion and Stoudemire, along with the shooting of Joe Johnson and newly acquired Quentin Richardson, it made the Suns lethal in transition. The Suns would average over 16 more points per game than the season prior, and their 110.4 points per game was tops in the league but they allowed 103.3 points, which was worse than the league. But 110 is still more than 103, and the Suns would improve by 33 games to finish 62-20, and 20, which was the best record in the league as D'Antoni won Coach of the Year. Nash would earn his first MVP award, and the Suns would send him, Marion, and Stoudemire to the All-Star Game. On top of that, Stoudemire would participate in the dunk contest, and both Richardson and Johnson would appear in the three-point shootout with Richardson taking home the crown. The Suns' starting five would each average 15 or more points per game, and Marion had his first season averaging double-digit rebounds since 2001, and would finish second on the team in scoring and blocks, as well as first in rebounds and steals. Marion would record 53 double-doubles and his first 20-rebound game in a February 27th loss to Boston. Marion would finish in the top 25 in scoring, rebounding, steals, blocks, and minutes, while also becoming the first player since David Robinson in 1992 to finish in the top five in rebounds and steals. The Suns would play the Grizzlies in round one, and Marion would have a great series, recording a double-double in each game and would shoot below 55% just once. Highlighted by 23 points, 11 rebounds, 3 steals, and 3 blocks on nearly 77% shooting in game four. Round two would be a back-and-forth series against Nash's former team which the Suns would ultimately win in six games, as Nash averaged over 30 points for the series, and the trio of Nash, Marion, and Stoudemire combined to average over 82 points per game for the series. Marion again played great, as he would put up a double-double for the series, only shooting below 46% once, and would pour in a postseason career-high 38 points to go along with 16 rebounds in the series-clinching Game 6 win. Unfortunately for the Suns, Marion disappeared when they needed him most in the Western Conference Finals versus San Antonio. Nash and Stoudemire would play great, with Stoudemire averaging an absurd 37 points for the five-game series. But Marion had just two games where he scored more than eight points and shot below 40% from the field, and would only make a single three-pointer in the whole series. But the Suns were still primed to be a force for years to come, and Marion finished the year averaging about 19.5 points, 11.5 rebounds, 
two steals, and a block and a half per game, while being named third team All-NBA. 2006 would be Marion's best season, and part of this was due to him needing to step up, as Stoudemire would miss all but three games with knee problems. Additionally, the team had lost both Johnson and Richardson in the offseason, as an unhappy Johnson had signed with Atlanta, and the Suns had surprisingly traded Richardson to New York, along with the draft rights to Nate Robinson, for Kurt Thomas and Dejon Thompson. Marion's career year would see him lead the team in scoring, rebounding, steals, and blocks, as his 21.8 points, 11.8 rebounds, and 1.7 blocks were all career highs. He would be one of four players in the league to average 20 points and 10 rebounds, as he would finish top 5 in rebounds and steals, and top 15 in points. Nash would take home his second straight MVP award, but Marion finished tied for 10th in MVP voting, as well as 7th in Defensive Player of the Year voting. Marion's incredible season saw him record 60 double-doubles, including a career-high 44 points to go along with 15 rebounds in a February 22nd win versus Boston, as well as a career-high 24 rebounds to go along with 31 points in a February 25th win versus Charlotte, and finally a career-high 8 steals in a February 6th loss to Minnesota, as he would once again be voted to the All-Star Game and be named third team All-NBA for the second consecutive year. And Marion knew what he brought to the table, and would rightfully express a desire to be acknowledged for what he meant to the Suns and the league, especially for how consistently he had been doing it. Even after losing a lot of their top players, the Suns still had the league's top offense, and would finish 54 and 28 due to solid contributions from starters Rajah Bell and most improved player Boris Diaw, as well as sixth man Leandro Barbosa. The Suns would win a seven game series versus Kobe Bryant and the Lakers in round one where Marion would play solid, but fall to third on the team in scoring, averaging about 18 points and 9.5 rebounds. Round 2 would bring another 7-game series with another LA team, as the Suns would punch their ticket to a second straight conference finals appearance in what would be a much better series for Marion, as he scored at least 30 points in 4 games, including 36 points and a postseason career high of 20 rebounds in a Game 5 win as he would average 25.6 points and 12.6 rebounds on over 50% shooting for the series. The Suns would face the Mavericks in the conference finals, but this series wouldn't have the same results as last year's semifinals matchup. Marion would fall to third on the team in scoring, but wouldn't have a bad series, as after averaging 126 field goal attempts across the first two rounds, he would shoot just 81 shots in the six-game series loss but he would still put up about 17 points and 13 rebounds on over 53% shooting. So the Suns season ended just short of a finals appearance for the second straight year. But the fact that they had gotten this far after losing so much firepower made them seem like a lock to get out of the West once Stoudemire returned next season. But for the regular season, Marion averaged about 22 points, 12 rebounds, 2 steals, and 1.5 blocks per game on a career-high 52.5% from the field. The 07 season went as expected, as Stoudemire returned at full strength, and the trio of him, Nash, and Marion would dominate again. Marion saw his numbers drop, but was still incredibly effective and efficient, and now the Suns had an elite scorer off the bench, in sixth man of the year, Leandro Barbosa. They once again were the highest scoring team in the league, and had the best defense during D'Antoni and Marion's time together. Marion would finish with the most total steals in the league, and would find himself finishing fourth in Defensive Player of the Year voting as well as being named to his final All-Star game, where he had his best performance, putting up 18 points off the bench. And the Suns would return to the NBA's elite, as they would go 61-21 to enter the playoffs as the two-seed. They would defeat the Lakers quite handily in a five-game series where Marion would finish third on the team in scoring and second in rebounds, which included a 26-point, 10-rebound performance in the series clinching Game 5. Marion would remain efficient in the second-round series versus San Antonio, but again would see his volume drop, as although he shot below 50% just once in the six games, he had three games with 12 or fewer points. But this series would be controversial, as Robert Ory would hip-check Steve Nash into the scorer's table during the final minutes of the Suns' Game 4 win, and would be ejected from the game, then suspended for Games 5 and 6. However, Amare Stoudemire and Boris Dio had both left the bench during the small brawl that had erupted after the foul which resulted in both being suspended for Game 5, which the Spurs would win by just 3 points in Phoenix. Then the Spurs would close out the series at home in Game 6, ending the Suns' season. But for Marion's regular season, he would finish with averages of about 17.5 points, 10 rebounds, 
two steals, and one and a half blocks per game. The Suns appeared to still be a title contender, but it unraveled during the 07 offseason, as Marion had wanted a max contract extension which the Suns weren't willing to offer. And after hearing his name in trade rumors throughout the offseason, Marion would publicly request a trade out of Phoenix in September, and a blockbuster trade was in place that would have seen Marion end up on the Celtics, Stoudemire end up on the Hawks, and Kevin Garnett be sent to Phoenix. But Marion indirectly vetoed this trade, as he reported he would only play for a team who would give him a max contract extension, which the Celtics had no intention of doing. Nonetheless, Marion was still a Phoenix Sun when the season started, and continued to be effective, but saw his usage drop, as Nash and Stoudemire were clearly the focal points of the team. Marion was still averaging a double-double, and the Suns were a top team in the league, sitting at 34-14. and 14. But then on February 6th, Marion would get his wish when he would be traded to the 9-39 and 39 Miami Heat for disgruntled center Shaquille O'Neal. Marion wouldn't get the contract extension he was hoping for after playing 47 out of a possible 48 games for the Suns. But once he got to Miami, he was bit by the injury bug that had been affecting many Heat players. Miami star Dwayne Wade would manage just 51 games this year, while forward Udonis Haslam played in 49 games, and center Alonzo Mourning appeared in just 25 contests. Marion would deal with back spasms in Miami before being shut down for the year with 7 games left in the season with a foot injury. So Marion would only play in 16 games for the Heat, and although he would average less than 15 points, he still pulled down over 11 rebounds and nearly 2 steals per game. But with all these injuries, Miami's season was a wash, and they would finish 15-67, and 67, with Marion finishing the year playing a total of 63 games and averaging about 15.5 points, 10 rebounds, 2 steals, and 1.5 and blocks per game. Marion and the Heat couldn't come to terms on a contract extension in the offseason, but Marion decided to opt in for the final year of his contract. The Heat had selected Michael Beasley with the second overall pick in the draft, and he would be second on the team in scoring in a sixth man role and the Heat would also acquire the draft rights to point guard Mario Chalmers from the T-Wolves. Marion appeared in 42 games for the Heat, but didn't look like the star he had been in Phoenix, where the fast-paced offense had served him so well, as he put up his lowest totals since his rookie year. Marion did have a high point this season, in the final game before the All-Star break, where he would put down a game-winning dunk versus Chicago. But then just hours later, he would no longer be a member of the Miami Heat as he was traded to Toronto for big man Jermaine O'Neal in a trade that had been in the works for a while. So Marion would be reunited with the man that drafted him, in Raptors president Brian Colangelo, and was hoped to be able to recapture his all-star form in a more mobile frontcourt featuring Raptors star Chris Bosch and former first overall pick Andrea Bargnani. Marion would play well in his 27 games for Toronto this year, as he would up his scoring to nearly 15 points per game on almost 49% shooting. But the Raptors were a middle of the pack team and would finish the year at just 33 and 49. Although Marion would end the year strong as he had a 34 point and 11 rebound performance on 15 of 18 shooting in the final game of the season. But Marion's second straight year of playing for two teams would end with him appearing in 69 games and averaging about 13 points, 8.5 rebounds, 1 steal, and 1 block per game. Sean Marion will be going to the Mavericks. He agreed to a five-year deal worth more than $40 million. Marion would be acquired by the Dallas Mavericks in a sign-in trade on July 9th, where he would receive a five-year, $39 million contract. Marion would no longer be a focal point, but would join a complete Mavs team led by superstar Dirk Nowitzki, as well as Jason Kidd and Jason Terry. The Mavericks would also trade forward Josh Howard and others to the Wizards for a package headlined by forward Karan Butler on February 13th, who would give the Mavs some added scoring going into the home stretch of the season, as they would go 23 and 6, including a 13 game win streak after acquiring Butler to finish the season at 55 and 27. Marion was no longer the player he was in Phoenix, but he gave the Mavs great versatility on both sides of the ball and would shoot nearly 51% for the season. The Mavs would enter the playoffs with a matchup versus San Antonio, but would surprisingly find themselves down three games to one. They would avoid elimination in game five before succumbing to the Spurs in Game 6. Marion would play a good defensive series, but would only crack 10 points twice, with his best game being a 14-point, 7-rebound performance in a Game 4 loss. And the Mavs' season would be over unexpectedly, with Marion averaging about 12 points, a then-career-low 6.4 rebounds, 1 steal, and 1 block per game. Going into 2011, the Mavs acquired what seemed to be the missing piece in defensive ace Tyson Chandler, 
and they would also decide to bring Marion off the bench and insert Butler into the starting lineup. Marion would excel in his bench role as he upped his scoring and rebounding while shooting 52%, and the Mavs were sitting at 26-8 on January 4th, but would then lose Butler for the remainder of the season after surgery on a ruptured patellar tendon. Marion would find himself inserted back into the starting lineup for the final 11 games of the season and would have three games with at least 21 points and three double-doubles during this stretch as the Mavs finished at 57-25 and, and would proceed to go on one of the most legendary playoff runs in NBA history. And Marion would also become the fifth player in NBA history to record 1,500 career steals and 1,000 career blocks. Marion would be a starter throughout the playoffs and in round one would be one of four players to average double figures in a six-game series win versus Portland, which included Brandon Roy's last great game when he scored 24 off the bench to lead the Blazers to a Game 4 win. Marion started the series slow, as he scored 9 points or less in the first 3 games, but would then average 14 points in the final 3 games, including a 12-point, 11-rebound Game 4. Round 2 brought the two-time defending champ Lakers, led by Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol, and to everyone's surprise, the Mavs swept LA behind great performances from Nowitzki and Terry. Marion would start the series well, averaging 12 points across the first two games, but would then put up just 10 points combined in games 3 and 4. The Western Conference Finals brought the up-and-coming OKC Thunder, led by Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. And at this point, Marion was really upping his game, as on top of being third on the team in scoring, while averaging over 1.5 blocks and steals, including a 26.8 rebound performance in Game 5, Marion played a large role in Kevin Durant shooting below 43% for the series, as the Mavs won in five games and were headed to the NBA Finals. The Mavs were matched up against the heavily favored Heat and their newly formed Big 3 of LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh, and would drop Game 1. But after Nowitzki saved the Mavs from a 2-0 deficit with a last-second layup to take Game 2, the Mavs would lose Game 3 by 2 points, then win 3 straight to defeat the Heat and win the first title in franchise history as well as Marion's first and only title. Marion played a great series as he would have just one game under double figures while also recording a double-double in Game 1 and a series-high 20 points in Game 2 to finish as one of only 3 players on the Mavs to average double figures for the series. So after 12 seasons, Marion was finally an NBA champion and his season ended with him averaging about 12.5 points, 7 rebounds, one steal, and half a block per game. Surprisingly, the Mavs looked a lot different going into the lockout short in 2012 season, as key pieces to their championship team were gone in Tyson Chandler, Karan Butler, JJ Berea, and Deshaun Stevenson, and were replaced by veterans Lamar Odom, Vince Carter, and Delonte West. Marion would be back in a starting role, yet would see most of his averages drop, but without Chandler, his rebounding went up to 7.4 per game, which led the team, as he would record 14 games with double-figure rebounds and 12 double-doubles. The Mavericks were still a good team and would finish the year at 36-30. In the playoffs, they would have a rematch of the Western Conference Finals versus OKC, but OKC would hit Dallas hard, en route to a four-game first-round sweep, in what would still be a decent series for Marion, as he finished third on the team in scoring and first in rebounds. He would start the series strong, averaging 16-8 on over 52% shooting in the first two games, but then would score a combined 15 points on 5 of 17 shooting in games 3 and 4. And Marion's regular season ended with him averaging about 10.5 points, 7.5 rebounds, 1 steal, and half a block per game. Part of the reason Dallas let so many players walk in the previous offseason was to maintain financial flexibility for the big free agents of this offseason, like big man Dwight Howard and point guard Darren Williams. But they would strike out on both and would also lose Jason Kidd and Jason Terry to free agency. So all Dallas was able to get to replace all these losses were OJ Mayo and former All-Stars Chris Kamen and Elton Brand. The 2013 season was disappointing for Dallas. Marion would miss 15 games, but Nowitzki would be the big loss, as he was limited to just 53 games, and averaged less than 21 points for the first time in 12 years. Marion was still a starter, and would up his scoring average for the games he played in while shooting over 51%, and would once again lead the team in rebounds with an improved 7.8 per game, as he recorded 14 double-doubles and a 17-rebound game on January 31st versus Golden State. But the Mavs struggled with injuries and losses of key players, as they would finish at 41-41 and 41 and miss the playoffs, 
Marion would reach 16,000 career points in a December 18th game versus Phoenix, which would see him join Hakeem Olajuwon, Carl Malone, and Kevin Garnett as the only players with at least 16,000 points, 9,000 rebounds, 1,500 steals, and 1,000 blocks. And for his regular season, he averaged about 12 points, 8 rebounds, 1 steal, and half a block per game. The Mavs would replace Mayo with Monte Ellis this season, and Dirk would have a healthy year as he played 80 games and returned to averaging over 21 a game. Marion was still a starter and played 76 games, but his scoring dropped back to around 10 points, and his 6.5 rebounds per game was now second on the team to Samuel D'Alembert. But it was clear Marion had lost a couple steps and had to become more of a spot-up shooter this year, as his 2.13s per game were his most since 2008 and his 35.8% from behind the arc was his best since 2003. But a healthier Mavs team would see improvement as they finished the year at 49-33 and, and would face the Spurs in round one, where they would go up two games to one and surprisingly take the Spurs to seven games before being blown out in game seven. Marion was mostly a non-factor in the series, as aside from a 20-point performance on 80% shooting in game two, he never scored more than nine points and shot above 40% just one other time the rest of the series. Marion would sign with Cleveland in the offseason, who had just reacquired LeBron James and traded for Kevin Love to play alongside young star Kyrie Irving, as they were now instant title contenders. Marion would play just 57 games due to a hip injury, starting 24 of them in what would be the quietest season of his career, a season in which he announced his intention to retire after the year on January 21st. The Cavs made a run to the NBA Finals, but Marion played sparingly, as leading up to the Finals, he appeared in just six games, scoring just a single bucket in those six games, and then would not see any action in the Cavs' six-game loss to the Golden State Warriors, ending Marion's season and his career. But Marion's final season saw him average about five points, three and a half rebounds, half a steal, and half a block per game. So Marion walked away as one of the most underappreciated stars of his time. He had an incredible 16-year career where he would average about 18 points and 10 rebounds during his time with the Suns, as well as over a steal and a block for his entire career. He was incredibly versatile on both ends of the court and helped every team he was on. He unfortunately flies under the radar today because a lot of his points were scored on hustle plays and spot-up threes, but in his prime, he was one of the most explosive players in the league that had everybody out of their seats as soon as he got the ball on the fast break. He had an incredible instinct and knack for tracking down loose balls, which is why he was such an elite rebounder for his size. But more importantly was the fact that it seemed like he could jump twice before most players could jump once. So even if he missed time to rebound or block, he would get back up quick enough to get it anyway. He also spent his prime years playing for a Suns team that had Steve Nash as the face of the franchise, as well as fan favorite Amari Stoudemire. So his quiet play, that lacked flair or flashiness, along with his less than expressive personality, led to him not being recognized for how great of a player he was. But everyone that saw him play knew just how important he was, and that on top of his amazing stats, it was his winning plays that don't show up on the stat sheet that truly made him as great as he was. But that's it for today's episode on Sean Marion. Hope you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe for more episodes like this one. If you like this one, check out this episode on his fellow UNLV alum, or this episode on his teammate in Phoenix at the beginning of his career. Thanks for watching and see you next time.